Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul, which as you probably know is pretty rare for my channel, but quarantine has gotten me a little bit stir crazy and I have been dying to buy some new books, which has not been helped also by the fact that so many lovely romance booktubers have been hauling all of these beautiful historical romances, usually older ones with like beautiful front covers, which used to be, you know, shameful, like we're not going to bring these out in public and now we're bringing them back, we're making them fun, and we are loving the sexy covers. So I just Decided that I was going to buy a mystery box of historical romances. I know Jess from Peace Love Books did this. I'll leave a link to her video in the description down below. And I think Jess was inspired to do it by Samantha from Books with Samantha. So if she did do it, I will leave a link in the description down below as well. Anyway, the way that you do it is you go on eBay and you find people who are selling lots of historical romances, like a lot of 20 or a lot of 30 historical romances. I decided to pick the same seller that Jess used and they seemed to really listen to what she wanted with historical romance. So basically all you do is you go and click buy now, I guess, to a lot of 20 historical romances and you can leave a note to the seller on what sorts of romances you're looking for, what sorts of historicals you want. For me, I was looking for historicals with really pretty step backs, which are the pictures under the front cover of a book. I was also looking for older titles and titles that weren't necessarily um, as popular because I have a fair amount of Judith McNaught and some of the older um, historical authors. And I also specified kind of like time period that I wanted to read. I really like Regency and I like medieval. At least that's what I know of so far that I enjoy. That was kind of what I put in the note to seller when I was checking out so they would know what exactly I wanted. And I'm going to be curious to see what ends up in this box. It came to me in pretty poor condition. And I don't know if that was like a fault of the seller or if it was just whoever handled this while it was shipping, but the box came to me like this, just completely fucked up. So I'll be curious to see if the books are in good shape, if they uh, are to my specifications, etc. I am so excited. This is my first time seeing them. It's your first time seeing them. I'm just generally very excited to see them. So let's get into it. I have 20 historicals here. I'm going to try and give you guys like a brief synopsis of each of these books, which may or may not be challenging, but like I'm gonna try to do it. Also, you guys let me know in the comments down below. I know I'm giving so much preamble before I get into this, but let me know in the comments down below after I do the haul if you guys would like me to read any particular one of these books or if you want me to read all 20 for a video. I don't know. I'd like to do something with this box of books besides just have them like languish on my shelves looking pretty. So anyway, let me know in the comments down below, but let's get into it. Let's see how these worked out. She's cute. I just gotta say, she's cute so far. So the first book that I see is exactly what I was looking for when I decided to do this thing, to, to buy this box, I guess. This is Blue Heaven, Black Knight by Shannon Drake. Just look at that. I mean, it's not a step back, but it is so beautiful. And this book was published in... 1986. I think this edition was 1987, so this is quite an old historical, and I'm just, I'm in love with the eyeshadow. Let me see if I can get it up close for you guys. As you can see, she's a real winner. Okay, so this one is set in medieval times, and it is about Elise, the bastard daughter of Henry II, King of England, and she falls for the Black Knight, Sir Brian Steed. I like that they picked the name Brian. I feel like that's a very, like, 80s sensible name. Definitely not a ye olden times name, but <laughs> they go on a mysterious journey, something about a sapphire ring. The back of it looks pretty uh, fantastic as well. A master storyteller, Shannon Drake knows how to tell a story that captures the imagination imagination, according to the Romantic Times. Don't know how reliable that publication is, but this, this is, this is worth it just for this book specifically because this is fucking beautiful and so campy, so fun. Excited to read this one. The next one is one that looks a little suspicious, but I did take a peek at the step back and I am not disappointed. This is Wicked by Jill Barnett. As you can see, there's like a dove and it is laser cut on the sides right here, but the step back of this is everything. He's like proposing to her in part of it incredible. So this one seems to be another sort of like medieval story, definitely not a Regency romance. It's about Lady Sophia Beatrice Rosalind and Therese Howard, who is the, I don't know, she's under the guardianship of King Edward I, and Sir Tobin is going to win her heart. He's also the man that broke her heart. So I'm assuming it's going to be sort of like a second chance romance, which could be really exciting. Like I said, I was not impressed with this book when I first looked at it, but the laser cut on this cover is amazing. And then that step back is like definitely worth it. So I'm loving that. And this book was published in 1999. Okay, this is kind of a fun cover. Definitely not as fun as the last two, but this is Rosamond by Bertrice Small. And the cover says excellent sensual historical romance. I actually like that we have kind of like a strong 
heroine on the cover. And this one is very much historical like the other two. I kind of like that these are sort of set in specific time periods. I feel like whenever I read Regency romances, they tend to be in sort of like a vague time period and you don't know who's ruling during that time, which is fine. This is just like historical romance and it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. But I like that these seem to have more of a historical tie than most of the other romances that I've read so far. So this one, our main character Rosamond, is the heiress to the manor of Friarsgate on the wild Cumbrian border between England and Scotland. And she is friends with Elizabeth of York and Catherine of Aragon. And she gets past the intimate chamber doors of young handsome Henry VIII. So is she gonna get with him? I don't know. I don't know who her love interest is gonna be. This is one that I'm like very interested in now because I took a whole class on Henry VIII back in the day. So I'm quite hyped. And she looks like a bad bitch, you know? The next one has a less than impressive cover. This is The Sun and the Moon by Patricia Ryan. It just has a sword on the cover. And this one actually looks pretty interesting. And again, it's set in the same time period as the other one. It's kind of like they knew exactly what I was looking for. I did give them, I didn't even give them that detailed of notes. I gave them like two sentences on what I wanted. But this one is about an Oxford scholar, Philippa de Paris. And she encounters a man named Hugh who recruits her for a critical espionage mission. And Hugh is the spy for King Henry. And I'm assuming it's Henry VIII, maybe? It doesn't specify, but I like espionage and I like adventure. I just finished reading How to Love a Duke in 10 Days by Kerrigan Byrne. And I really liked that one. While it was more kind of Regency setting, I think it was like post Regency, but it had a lot of adventure and a lot of intrigue. And that's kind of what I'm looking for in my historical romance. Like I like, you know, just the bang and like, that's great too, but I'm excited for this one. This cover is also incredible. I This one looks so old. Let's see when this one was published. I probably should have looked up when that last one was published. I'm gonna say that one was in the 90s. Oh, this one was actually only published in 1994. Um, that's the year I was born, so I guess that is a 25-year-old book. This is Alina by Merlin Lovelace, and the cover of this one, it's got the blue foil for the title of the book. I just love this. This is gorgeous. <laughs> this one is about a warrior princess, Alina. She's a Celtic princess, but how could she foresee that the Iron Fist of Rome would stroke her soul with a velvet glove of passion? So I'm assuming she falls for a Roman guy who's like coming to invade? I don't know. This one smells amazing. It's got that old library smell and I'm just, I love this cover. 10 out of 10, guys. I'm like, this is only five books in and I'm already way too excited for all of these. So maybe I will just do a video reading all 20 of these. Okay, so the next book that I have is Prince of Danger by Amanda Scott. And this one has sort of a lackluster cover. It's not like the worst ever. However, I'm actually really excited to read this one because it is about Lady Isabel McLeod and her love interest, Sir Michael St. Clair. And basically he ends up in danger. She has to save him and she ends up falling for him. And apparently he is really tender. It says it on the cover, guys. He's like tender. So I'm excited about that. Not often, especially in older historicals, do you get a guy who is kind of a softy. I'm hoping that he ends up actually being a softy, like to my liking. This book was written in, I think, 2005. So this is a slightly newer historical comparatively, but I've never heard of it and I have never heard of this author before. So I'm excited to give this one a shot. The next one has a cheesy and amazing cover. It is A Knight's Vow by Candace Cole. And I mean, come on. You really cannot beat that flow. Just incredible. So this is about Sir Lucian and he is seeking revenge for a man who stole his, is it family? home? I don't know. Yeah, his birthright. As the Lord of Incham Keep is how I'm going to pronounce this because I don't actually know how to pronounce it. But he ends up falling for a beautiful wench and the wench happens to be his enemy's granddaughter. So it sounds intriguing. I'm interested in this. I don't even know. Okay, this is a zebra historical. That kind of makes sense as to why this cover is super cheesy, but I mean, you can't beat it. It's pretty great. I love the gold foiling on the letters. This is just really feeding my soul right now. The next one is another zebra cover, and this one has like a holographic uh, heart on it, and it is The Duke's Lady by Brenda K. Jernigan. I've never heard of this author before, but that cover... Okay, so this one seems like it is about deserted treasure. An American spy named Adam Trent comes across a woman who has basically no memory of who she is or how she got there, but she has a map to a hidden treasure pinned to her chemise. And so I think they're gonna go abroad and I don't know, find some missing treasure. Fling to America aboard Adam's ship, the two cannot deny all that they feel in each other's embrace. I would love to know what they feel in each other's embrace. I would also love to know where this hidden treasure is. I'm quite excited for this. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I was hoping that I would get some old school Joanna Lindsay. If you don't know who Joanna Lindsay is, she is, I think, the most prolific historical romance author or romance author ever. And she has some amazing old school covers. I think this might be my favorite cover of all of them. This might be the one that goes on my bookstagram to promote this video. I don't know. This is Tender Rebel by Joanna Lindsay. That cover 
is incredible. This one is about a Scottish heiress who needs the safety of marriage, so I'm assuming it's going to be a marriage of convenience with an English rogue. It's everything that I could have wanted and asked for and more. This has some like gold foiling around the purple letters at the bottom. Oh, it's so cheesy and amazing. When was this one published? This was published in 1988. It's older than me. Everything, everything. Okay, this is not a cover <laughs> I would have picked out on my own. However, I'm actually kind of glad that I received this one because I've been kind of on the hunt for some good cheesy Christmas books, Christmas romances, if you will, to read, and this one looks like it's gonna fit the bill. It's called Once Upon a Christmas by Nancy Lawrence. It is a zebra regency romance, so they did definitely hit the nail on the head with that and does have an old school cover. It is just so cheeserific. I don't love the fact that it's got kind of like a Harlequin-esque um, like big title on it like that. Not a huge fan, but this seems kind of fun. It looks like there's gonna be some speed racing with the handsome devil Breck Davenant. Also the names on this are interesting, Narissa Raleigh and Breck Davenant. There's gonna be a whirlwind of Yuletide festivities and I am excited for it. Also I'm feeling, feeling something in it. Do you think that if I sent this little free book certificate that I would actually get a free book or is it too late? Do you think it's too late for me to get a Zebra Regency? Do you think this could be mailed? Not what I would have picked out for myself, however, I'm not too upset about this. This one has a very similar cover. It is not a zebra romance, but it is a signet regency romance, and it is Birds of a Feather by Allison Lane. There's a dog on the cover, so I'm not too, not too upset about this. So this one seems cheesy and incredible. It is about a typical wallflower, Joanna Patterson, who keeps physically running into Lord Sedgwick Wiley. He cares more about the cut of his coat than the feelings of others, according to the back of this book, and she is going to change his mind. She's going to make him a compassionate individual, I'm sure, by the end of this book. Looks short and sweet, kind of interested, kind of intrigued, and this one was written in 1999, and it is an imprint of, looks like, Penguin. So I've never heard of this imprint before. I don't know how long it lasted, but I'm sort of intrigued. Some of the ones with older covers, like I don't love this one in particular, like I don't love these sorts of covers, but these seem to be sort of in line with the more modern Harlequin romances, so it definitely has me interested. Okay, wow. This next one has a step back, and I'm very excited. I just saw a peek of it, and... Okay, it is The Silver Coin by Andrea Kane. The front cover of this book is actually quite pretty. It is sort of like embossed, and it's got this sort of palatial estate in wintertime on it. I'm sort of living for. So this is an interesting one. This is about a girl whose father is locked away in jail. He has sort of a violent past and now people are after her and her best friend. So her and her family end up hiring this man named Royce and Royce is sort of a loner, sort of this detached expert on like finding people. So he is going to, I think, hunt down this assassin that's trying to kill her. I love this step back. It's very modern, which I think is kind of fun. I kind of like when the <laughs> clothes on historical romance covers does not match the time period in which the story is set. This book was written in 1999 and this step back is just amazing. I mean, I feel like I would wear that sort of like slip number right now, like in modern day. I love this a lot. Very excited about this one. And again, a kind of a unique plot, not something that I would have picked up on my own necessarily, but excited to get into it. The next one, I kind of love this. Maybe maybe this is going to be the one that I post to promote this video because it's got all the summer vibes. It's Dream Lover by Jean Innes, and it's got this amazing yellow dress on this woman. Let me show you guys, but just look at that. I am in love. So this one seems like it has sort of a more basic premise. It is about Brita Vivian, and it is about a guy, I think, I don't know if he's a pirate or what, but he sails into town and and falls in love with her. I think he's sort of like a rake type character. This book was written in 1991. This cover is to die for and I've never seen this book before so I'm I'm gonna say it about every single one of these books I'm sure but I'm very intrigued about this one. Okay they're really providing me. I feel like they just went into my brain and were like let's find all of the books that Chandler was looking at at half price books a few months ago and let's just like put them in a box and give them to her because we have another Christmas romance, which again, I'm so excited about. This is My Wicked Marquess by Constance Hall. This cover is kind of ugly, but I also kind of love it at the same time. It has sort of like a Christmas ornament and this sort of like Regency cover. I want to, I bet this was written in the 90s. That's my guess. It's got 90s vibes. Yeah, 1999 by Connie Coslow. So Constance Hall is her pseudonym. So this is about Megan who hasn't had a happy Christmas since the death of her parents because her stepbrother has gambled away all of their money. And this is about her falling for a guy who is trying to trap her brother for gambling and like being a ne'er-do-well. So that sounds kind of interesting. I wonder how that's going to work with like a guy trying to come and like 
fuck up her brother. I don't know. I'm very intrigued. I like espionage. Could be good. Christmas espionage? Yes. Okay, this one was just sort of like tucked in the box. Don't love the cover, but the back is not bad. And it is called Bride of the Tower by Shannon Schultz. This book was published in 2003 by Harlequin. Harlequin historical, historical romantic adventure, which is what we could all wish for, I'm sure. So this is the cover of it. Nothing super impressive, but the back does have the couple, I'm assuming, on the back. It's kind of fun. It does not tell us what the book is about. I don't think anywhere in the book. Also, the font is incredibly large and I don't know about this one, but is she going to surrender to burning desire is what we're all asking ourselves. And I think the question's going to be answered with a yes. I'm kind of excited about this. Okay, we're getting down to the wire and I think there's gonna be some real gems hidden in these last like five books. So the next one is Across a Wild Sea by Sasha Lord. Loving this dress on the front cover, kind of want it for myself. Looks like this. This seems like some shit I'm gonna like because it's got horses in it. And if you didn't know, I am nothing but a horse girl at heart. This is about Xanthir O'Bannon, cast out Scotsman, marauding sea captain, feared by all. He's coming back for his birthright and he has nothing left but pride and a lust for revenge. But he meets Alana, who is a blind ethereal beauty with an uncanny affinity for horses that roam across the island. This is giving me Scorpio races vibes if it was like a historical romance written in the early 2000s. At least I think that's when this was written. Did I look? Did I check? I don't know, maybe I should do that. This was written in 2005. So so quite excited for this one. We love horses. We love Scot Scottish romances. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Another stunner. This is probably, again, one of my favorites from the bunch. This is Rourke's Folly by Claire Del Delacroix. Delacroix? I don't know how we're going to say that, but look at this cover. Just feast your eyes on this. This is amazing. I want him for myself. I want her dress. I want everything. A cloth merchant's daughter, Adela, lived a life of responsibility. Little color was there to the fabric of her dreams until the day an impudent, an impudent, impudent night with mischief in his eyes began to untangle the threads of her resistance. This was purchased from a Kmart, I can tell from the back cover, and it was published in 1994. Again, a romance written the year that I was born. I'm proud to share a birth year with this book because this is incredible. <laughs> I'm so excited for this one. Um, this one, again, doesn't seem like it's Regency. It seems very like she's my wench and I'll protect her with my heart kind of thing. So yes. Okay. Okay. I, I spy step backs. These are the last three books, guys. Yes. Bear with me. So this first one is not a step back and it is so skinny, but I'm kind of here for it because there's a bitchy girl on the front cover. It's called The Desirable Duchess by Marion Chesney. When of the Romantic Times Award for Outstanding Regency Series Writer, which we love to see. Loving the dress that this girl's wearing, but also I'm just really loving the bitchy girl in the background. Let's see if you can get some focus on this. Can we? Okay. Her? Incredible. We love this fit. We love how pissed she looks. This is about Alice Lacey, a true incomparable, and her marriage to the Duke of Ferrant was the event of the season. Few realized, however, that she was secretly in love with another, so much so that she confided her feelings to a clever talking Mina Bird who deemed it fit to announce the intimacies right at the couple's wedding. Okay, this seems so fucking messy. So here for it. I mean, I can kind of tell that it's messy by the cover, but yes. Yes. At first I was like, I don't, you know, I was unsure, but now I'm sure. Which of these to un- Earth first. We have two historicals left. They both have step backs from what I can tell. The first one is In the Shadow of Midnight by Marsha Canham. Looks a little something like this. Not the most exciting of covers. Let's see the step back. Oh wow. Oh wow. There's there's liquid pouring off of them. She was a fiery noblewoman who met her match in the warrior pledged to deliver her to another man's arms. We love that. We love that. Okay, look at this. I'm living. Can you see the sweat or like pearl beads that are kind of coming off of them. This is going to be on a Step Back Saturday post on Instagram. I can feel it in my blood and my bones. So into it. I don't want to read any more into it beyond what we just read in the Step Back. This was published in 1994, again, birth year, by the lovely Marcia Canham. Canham. Thank you, Marsha, for bringing this into the world. And then lastly, we have Dance in Heather by Julie Beard. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a Scottish romance. I could be wrong. Maybe? Mm -hmm. I think I might be wrong. It is about Lady Tess Farnsworth, bitterly accepting the royal decree to wed a man who she detests above all. So I'm assuming it's gonna be some sort of enemies to lovers, something or other. The step back on this, kind of classic, kind of don't love it though, because I kind of wanted it to be like a two page spread sort of thing, but it is cute. I'll show you that in just a second. This one was published in 1996. Of June of 1996. Like, I kind of, it's kind of fun. I kind of hate it. I kind of love it at the same time. And I kind of like the cover of this one. It's kind of, it's different. I haven't seen anything like this before. What is my official prognosis on this box? I think they really knocked it out of the park with my requests. I didn't actually give them that much. I think I told you guys more than what I actually told them, which was just, please give me stuff that is either Regency 
or medieval, please give me stuff that's older and give me stuff that has pretty covers and step backs and they really fucking delivered. So if you're looking for a lot of historical romances to go and check out, I would recommend this seller. I think it's Seventh Avenue Books. I'll leave a link in the description to who in particular I bought these books from. This was such a win. I'm just so excited because I can't find this sort of stuff in my like half price books or used bookstores. I feel like I find a lot of stuff that I've already read, stuff like Tessa Dare books and, and whatnot. And then also like 90s contemporary mass paper mass market paperbacks which I don't know just not really my thing this was fantastic I hope you guys enjoyed watching it I I'm sure I was a little all over the place I'm not great with hauls but like I said at the beginning of this video let me know down in the comments if you guys want to see a video of me reading all of these books maybe sometime in November December maybe October? I don't know. I have all of my shit planned for August and September already, so I don't have any time then to read these, but I do, I do want to read at least five or so of them. Maybe all of them. I don't know. Just let me know. If you have any bold ideas on how I can read these and incorporate them into my reading, I would love to know, but um, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys so much, and until next time.